What's up guys and welcome to my one year anniversary of having an ultra wide monitor. Today I'll be going over the good, the bad and the ugly for ultra wides as well as whether or not I think it's worth you actually getting an ultra wide monitor and for what kind of use cases as well an ultra wide is best suited for. So the monitor I have been using for the past year has been the Dell U3415W, a 34 inch 3440 by 1440 IPS panel from Dell. Now the reason why 3440 by 1440 works so well on a 34 inch screen is that you actually have a pixel density of 110 pixels per inch, which is really, really important for a number of things when it comes to ultra wide experience. Because the pixel density is 110, that means that it has the same pixel density as a standard 27 inch 16 by 9 1440p panel, uh, which means that you can actually do a lot of stuff and it's very versatile and it really is the sweet spot for pixels per inch in my opinion. It gives a much clearer image of your standard 1080p panel, but it's not quite as exhaustive on your system resources as 4K, as well as that you won't have to mess with any kind of scaling whatsoever. So how are the ultra wides for productivity? Well, because of the resolution, uh, it means that you can do a ton of different stuff and it's really good for a number of different applications. It's great for editing documents, having up to three or even four if you're really cutting it close uh, documents up at the same time and actually being able to work on them is a really handy feature, especially when I'm doing scripts uh, or doing any kind of university work as well. It is really good for that type of application. Web browsing as well is an absolutely awesome experience. Being able to have a ton of tabs open at once uh, means that if you're a tab hole like me, you will be kept very happy. Um, I found it best for, you know, when you're doing online shopping or researching a product or doing, you know, any kind of university work as well, where you're kind of required to have a number of tabs open at one time. Uh, it really is a very useful feature. For video editing and kind of uh, media consumption productivity work, uh, the ultrawides do also have a very, very, very good track record. Being able to use Premiere, for example, really benefits from the extra horizontal resolution, allowing you to see more of the timeline. Um, I will say that I still think two 27 inch panels are the way to go for video editing because personally I like to have my Premiere up on one screen as well as a number of bins and color graphs on the other side as well. However, with the ultra white, it does still work. I generally end up taking up two thirds of the screen with my timeline uh, as well as having the rest of the third being for my color graphs. Uh, and other bins and stuff like that. Now, as well as that, you do have the option of using virtual desktops, and I actually have uh, virtual desktop macros keyed into my keyboard, and it makes things so much easier. You get double the screen real estate, up to sometimes three or four, depending on how many desktops you use, and it really helps having, say, for example, a uh, social media or kind of like chill out break panel, as well as a dedicated workspace as well. And the virtual desktops, um, now they've been integrated into Windows and not just Linux, it really is a useful feature, especially for ultrawides. One thing I will mention with the ultrawides though, if you are doing productivity work and you do rely on having a perfectly straight line, uh, then a curved ultrawide display will probably not be the way to go because the curved display means that you do get a little bit of distortion with straight lines. So if you're doing any kind of CAD work um, or any kind of really uh, straight line critical work in Photoshop or anything like that, you will get some distortion. So I would definitely recommend going for a flat panel. And the curve is something I'd like to talk about as well. The curve, if anyone tries to tell you it's to increase immersiveness, that's bullshit in my opinion. The main emphasis of the curve is to make sure that you have the same distance from the center screen uh, to your eyes that you do at the sides of the panel because if you have a flat panel and you're looking at it from an angle it is very noticeable and the image does start to distort a little bit more so having the curved means that you're actually facing the panel more when in a central position uh, which does kind of help alleviate the uh, immense breadth of the monitor. So for media consumption, media consumption is something you're either going to love and hate depending on your use case. And the thing about ultra wide monitors as well is that it really does depend on your use case and how much you're actually going to benefit from it. For example, if you're watching a lot of movies at your desk or anything like that, you will absolutely love the ultra wide experience. That's because most movies, especially Blu-rays, are filmed in the 21 by 9 or similar format, which means that you have absolutely no black bars on your screen at all. Whereas when you're watching things like TV and YouTube, which are typically filmed in a 16 by nine format, you will get a lot of black bars. So over the year, I haven't actually watched a ton of movies on my ultra wide, but for those of you who do, you will have a very enjoyable experience and it does look incredibly awesome. Watching things like Avatar really is quite mind blowing and I actually did end up sitting in my chair and watching the entire thing at my desk. 
So again, it really does depend on your use case. If you're watching a lot of YouTube content or TV shows which are filmed in 16x9, you are going to get those black bars and those can be a problem for some people. Having the black bars there, especially when you're watching at night, makes backlight bleed all the more noticeable, which really can be a bit of a pain for some people. For me as well, it's kind of the idea that I'm paying for this ultra wide monitor and I'm not getting the full screen real estate, which just does tend to bug me just a little bit. All in all though, media consumption is a really, really good experience, especially if what you watch movies, but if you are thinking uh, about more watching YouTube content and TVs, then you may benefit more from having two 27 inch panels instead. So onto the gaming. Now gaming was the main reason that I got into ultra wides in the first place. I really wanted to increase the immersiveness uh, that I had with games and the ultra wide really does allow you to do that. So going over the pros list for the ultra wides first is that it does increase the immersion. Having 34 inches and having the extra horizontal resolution means you can actually see more on screen. It's really noticeable uh, in first person shooter games, but more especially in games uh, like role playing games, third person games, where you can actually benefit more from having a wider field of view. Um, even games like uh, 2D games like Ori and the Blind Forest, for example, uh, being able to see more of your horizontal resolution as well, it, it just kind of draws you in a little bit more, which is really, really, really quite cool. One example of this is the latest Rise of the Tomb Raider game, which has really been the only game in kind of the, the recent past that I've kind of had to put the controller down and just stare at it and move the camera around because it was so, so gorgeous on an ultra wide panel. And I saw it in 4K as well, and I still think that the ultra wide is the way to go for kind of immersive gaming. Having the extra field of view as well does make it seem a little bit more cinematic and not the potato kind and not that has nothing to do with the curves of the screen um, but just having the extra field of view and the screen real estate. So pros for the ultra wide gaming then, it's incredibly immersive and it may give you a tactical edge on some first person shooter games having the extra field of view although I find that a little bit debatable. As well as having a pixel density of 110 pixels per inch you do get a very crisp image and it is incredibly gorgeous all around. So onto the cons of ultra wide gaming especially at 1440p ultra wide gaming. Having a 3440 by 1440 resolution means that you actually have a ton of pixels to drive. It's not as intensive as 4k is so there's a benefit there but it is much more intensive than your typical 2560 by 1440 panel. So you will really need a 980 Ti or similar in order to actually get the most out of your gaming experience. Now you can run it on a 970 panel and I've just done a ton of benchmarks on XCOM 2, Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, Rainbow Six Siege and Metro last night which I'll be releasing in a video next week where I talk about the benefits of 3440 by 1440 as opposed to 2560 by 1080 so subscribe for that one. So there are also a couple of other cons when it comes to ultra wide gaming. Number one, first and foremost, is one of the main things I've struggled with with ultra wide gaming is being able to stream on Twitch. Having a aspect ratio of 21 by 9 really does not fit the Twitch format well and if you are a Twitch streamer I would stay away from ultra wide monitors if you are intending to stream on that particular panel. Uh, some games you can get to run in 16x9 natively uh, but some of them really just do not want to run 16x9 and will actually stretch out and will actually run at 16x9 but stretch out to the entire screen. One good example is Alien Isolation. You can actually get that running at 16x9, uh, you know, what you'd see on a typical 27 inch panel. Um, but other games you just cannot force into a 16x9 res uh, aspect ratio, which is really frustrating and is kind of one of the drivers in me making, in making me want to switch to two 27 inch panels. As well as that, I did encounter some issues as well. For example, trying to play Hearthstone and watch a Twitch stream at the same time. Uh, you're going to have to run Hearthstone in full screen mode which takes up a 17x9 uh, kind of uh, ratio on the left hand side of your screen and having the Twitch up on the right hand side. Uh, you can kind of pop out the video and make it full screen but it is a kind of a bit of a downer because you, if you want to see chat as well then you end up with this tiny little screen and chat flying by uh, when you're playing. So in, in that use case it is better to have two 27 inch panels but it's kind of like a smaller thing that I thought I'd just mention because some of you as well might like playing games and watching them at the same time. And while we're talking about competitive games, if you're into CSGO or Dota 2 then you are not going to enjoy your ultra wide experience. Valve takes a rather strict stance on the 21 by 9 aspect ratio in terms of it giving a competitive edge of your 16 by 9 fellows. Uh, and it's really impossible to run these games on an ultra wide resolution. Uh, CSGO is more playable because, but it does have some cutoff. 
Uh, but Dota 2, for example, is completely unplayable in my book. It forces a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and stretches the screen so to the point where the UI is just basically unrecognizable, which is a real shame. And that leads on to the adoption of Ultra Wide as a gaming format coming into 2016. Now, for the past year, um, I have had some issues trying to get games to run, and the general compatibility has been pretty good, but there have been some instances, uh, like with Dota 2 and CSGO, for example, uh, where it just refuses to work. But basically, for every single other game that I've tried, there has been a community workaround, or the developers have come up with a solution a couple of weeks or months uh, into the game's release. Overall, the compatibility for ultra-wide games has been improving dramatically, and that is only going to continue to improve with 2016, with a ton of good gaming ultra-wide options coming out in the near future. One of which was the Acer X34, which is a 100Hz G-Sync uh, and IPS display panel, which, as far as I'm concerned, is the best gaming panel I've ever, ever had the pleasure to use. I've been using it for the past week, I've reviewed it, uh, that's going up on the Computer Lounge channel, uh, but it was a seriously amazing panel and if you are going for an ultra wide panel and you're wanting to game as well then I would highly recommend going with the X34. So in terms of community fixes there is a very active ultra wide community who do try and get games to work as soon as they come out. Um, I actually did an entire video on this uh, a couple of weeks ago and you can see that in one of the corners I cannot remember which uh, just up here and I basically go through flawless widescreen and how I make every single game that I've managed to play over the past year actually work with ultra wide. It's actually really simple and easy to do and it doesn't take too much time at all. It's a very plug and play, very much worth your time. So who is an ultra wide monitor actually for? Well, I think that really depends on your use case and what you're going to actually be doing a lot of the time on the monitor. If you're gonna be watching a lot of 16 by nine content, ultra wide may not be the way to go and you might want to consider two 27 inch panels uh, instead. If for productivity users, if you're doing any kind of uh, word editing, uh, if you tend to use a lot of uh, browser space or whatever, then ultrawide is a really, really good option. Uh, I still think 227 inch panels are the go-to for video editors out there, although it's still very workable on a 34 inch 1440p solution. If you do a lot of gaming as well, especially if you're wanting a more immersive experience, then ultrawide is hands down the best way to go, especially if you go the X34 route, which is both G-Sync IPS and overclockable to 100 hz so you really don't get any kind of compromise with that monitor whatsoever. So that basically sums up who it's for. Any kind of productivity work, any kind of immersive gaming, uh, and anyone who doesn't want to deal with two monitors as well. Having a single ultra-wide monitor on my desk has really cleaned up my setup, as well as that for people who don't want to bother with having two 27-inch panels, because two panels means twice the cables, twice the power, as well as twice the clutter. Having a single ultra-wide panel on my desk really does clean up my setup and makes it look all the more neater. Now, who would I not recommend an ultra-wide panel for? If you are purely into your video editing, I think 227 inch panels, as I said before, is the way to go. Also, if you do not want to tinker with any of your games and perhaps wait a couple of weeks until patches and stuff like that are implemented to support 21 by nine, then do not get an ultra-wide panel as some games really do require just, you know, five to 10 minutes worth of tinkering to get it running perfectly. Uh, in my opinion, it is well worth it. Uh, it really is an amazing experience, but if you don't want to have to deal with any of that, then don't get an ultra wide panel, at least not until it becomes a much more widely supported resolution. And that's basically it. Um, Twitch streamers, stay away. Uh, if you don't want to tinker with anything, stay away. Um, if you kind of really have a strong personal preference about your editing workflow uh, or general productivity workflow, for example, if you're coding as well and you prefer a portrait screen uh, as opposed to a single large landscape screen, then I can totally dig that. Um, but yeah, for the, for the most part, an ultra-wide really will benefit you in a huge number of ways. Now, one thing I will finish off this video saying is that for the love of God, do not get a 2560 by 1080p panel if you are considering an ultra-wide and you're also wanting to do any kind of productivity work at all. The decreased pixels per inch on the monitors as well really makes it look a lot more muddy uh, and you really will not have a fun time doing anything productivity related on a 1080p ultra-wide panel. That being said, if you are wanting to do any kind of serious gaming on an ultra-wide panel and ultra-wide gaming is the only thing you're interested in, uh, then I would check out the Z35 which is a 1080p VA panel from Acer. Uh, it's also G-Sync and overclockable to 200Hz. Uh, so that is actually a good option if you're only wanting to get into ultra-wide gaming uh, and the lower resolution as well means that you can take advantage of a lower horsepower GPU like a 970 for example. 
So that's it from me guys, I really hope you enjoyed my experience with Ultrawide. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you are thinking of getting a Ultrawide as well. Um, and also check out my video on how to get games to work with Ultrawide, as I really do think it is a good Kickstarter for those getting into Ultrawide gaming. But that's it from me guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.